Yep, good. Fire! Three, two, one! <laughs> Gallon of water. So what we have done, we have built a picture-perfect replica of Jacob here. So he was given one hour to construct a fort to protect him from my onslaught as I try to destroy him. So we got gallons of water, we got pumpkins, we got a 15-pound weight, and something on fire. This will be fun. All right. So we're going to start with a nice medium-sized pumpkin. First try. Off to a good start. Feeling good about this. That was stage one. That's my that's my little gun. Look at that. It punched the whole slat out. Honestly, that does have me a little worried because that's a pretty soft pumpkin and that punched right through the wood. Shot two, three, two, one. Ooh, a little bit to the right. All right, that was a miss. A little bit to the right. We had the distance, but a little bit to the right. We'll do one more pumpkin, then we're gonna move on to the next thing. Here we go! Nice. Good job, Jack. All right, so one of the cameramen had a really good idea. Uh, chain two of them together. Let's see how this goes. Three, two, one. Enough of the water jugs. Now, this is a 15 pound weight. Wow! Oh, that was like three feet short. Oh my gosh. Ugh, disappointed. Disappointed! Let's try again. Oh, it went over it. Are you kidding me? Clear over. Hopefully that didn't hit that other camera. We're getting some crazy range out of this, which is really cool. This is the furthest we've ever gotten this trebuchet to fire, but we're completely missing our target. It's going way over. So we've made an adjustment. Hopefully we're gonna get a much later release and just send the weight right into the fort. Finally, we knocked down a whole pallet. That like peeled it right off the front. A couple more of those and this guy's dead. Look at that, that is a thick board and just cracked right through that. Yeah, feeling good about it. So that did a lot of damage. We're gonna leave this pallet here because uh, that will be fuel for the fire. The not metaphorical fire. <laughs> Look at the hole it made. It just went right through it. Holy cow, just like splintered it to pieces. It had to have like brushed him as it went through. I wanna do one more with this and then we're gonna move on to something else. See if we can finish them off. That's oh, a good one. He's got a little roof now to protect him. Look how scared he looks. You can see the fear in his eyes. Look at him, steely eyed. This is even making him nervous. Next up a test shot with this heavy log. I have gotten a couple solid hits on that thing and it is still standing. So we're gonna ramp this up and make sure we take that thing out once for all. Big hit here, big fiery hit for what we're looking for. 
Big hit. Big hit. Here we go. All right. Key is to let it cook for a couple of minutes. Okay, that's taking off faster than I was expecting. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. melting out from right underneath him. Oh, Jamie, he's so hot, he's collapsing from the heat. Here, look at him, he's so tired. Oh, this is a hot fire. I gotta put my sunglasses back on to protect my eyeballs. He doesn't have long now. Look, the whole guy's made of hay. He doesn't, he doesn't stand a chance. Look, his feet are on fire. Now, this is not historically accurate. The siegers would not come and put the castle out. That would not happen. But today, we're gonna do that. Look, his sleeve's on fire. That's death. If your head's off, you're dead. I, I, I think I can claim my victory now. All right, do you concede defeat? I'll put him out. He's, he's dead. His head's gone. He's completely on fire. I don't think he's with you. Sorry, buddy. You were very okay. smoky. Save the beard. You are one spicy boy. You are toasty. Put out your castle. This is more appropriate, I think. The person whose castle is set on fire normally would be the one putting it out. On to the award ceremony. I understand I get a trophy. Holy cow, that is heavy. Yes. Is that solid gold? It is. That's real gold. Oh, Hopefully I will keep this for a long, long time, but yeah. Uh, until... <laughs> <laughs> Sore loser. I got my trophy. See if we can put a little bit of salt in that wound. All right, three, two, one. No, Hello, my name is Isaac. Welcome back to Fort in the Woods. If you're watching this video, then hopefully by now you have already seen our Fort versus Trebuchet video. If not, there will be a link to that at the end of this video in the end card as well as down in the description. All right, so we started around 7 a.m. on a Saturday morning. We went to Lowe's with our dad to pick up all the wood and materials that we would need for this build. After Lowe's, we headed back to the house and began to lay out the wood on the driveway to get started on the base. We began to measure and cut the boards for the base of the trebuchet. We figured we would save time and work more efficiently if we didn't have to keep going back and forth between the saw and the base. And putting the base together would be easier if we had all the pieces ready at once, so we did much of our cutting up front. Some of the boards got pretty splintery as we were cutting them, so we used a file to smooth the edges back down and take some of those splinters out. After all the boards were cut to the right length, we measured everything out and began to put all the pieces together with the screw. We had some trouble at one point uh, determining what angle we needed to cut the boards for the outriggers out. They, there seemed to be a miscalculation in the plans that we had. Um, we finally sorted it out, but then we ran into some trouble with our table saw not being able to cut at that angle. Uh, but eventually we were able to sort it out and we moved along. We got the boards cut and laid out, but we didn't fasten them together just yet. Before we did that, we wanted to get the legs of the frame cut laid out and put together. Now these were gonna be holding a lot of weight. Not only would they be holding up the arm in the fully loaded bucket, but they would also have to withstand the force of the bucket dropping when the trebuchet was fired. So they needed to be strong, and we wanted to make sure we put them together carefully. The center legs would be made from two by fours that we would glue and screw together. We measured them out, drilled pilot holes, applied the glue, and then screwed them together. With the center legs together, we moved on to the outrigger boards and we joined the joints together doing the same thing. Pilot holes, glue, and then screws. Yeah. 
So the diagonal legs that would come from the top of the frame needed something to rest on. So we wanted to make a foot of sorts for each side, so we put a piece of plywood under each side. To do this, we took some plywood and cut it in smaller pieces so it would be easier to work with and move around. And then we traced the outline of the outriggers and cut them to the exact shape to form the foot and then secured it to the outriggers. With the two feet secure and in place, the outriggers were done, so we ran bolts with washers through the holes that we had drilled and bolted them to the base. Next, we began the first steps for the bucket. We measured and traced out the shape for the side of the bucket and cut it out using a circular saw for the straight bits and a jigsaw for the curved section. Uh, this first piece would serve as just a template for the other side. We just laid it down in the plywood and traced it out. We cut the pieces now because we were using the same piece of plywood for multiple pieces of the trebuchet. We just went ahead and got those big sections cut out, but we would not actually get to assembling the bucket for quite some time. We worked well into the night, really into the early hours of the next morning, but we finished and set up the sides of the frame. A lot of time had to go into these to make sure they were just right as it would be holding up a lot of weight from the fully loaded bucket, as we said before. Uh, these would be holding up the fully loaded bucket, the arm, and all the force of the trebuchet as it was fired. We also got the arm finished that night, but as the night progressed, we didn't want to keep working outside with our power drills and saws and be disturbing our neighbors. So we went to work inside in the workshop, but the constraints of our small workshop made it very difficult to film. So unfortunately, we don't have very much footage of that. But the arm was made from two boards. We, uh, we had one longer central board that we cut the edges off of the end to kind of taper the end off. At this point, it was about 4.30 in the morning and we were really starting to feel it. We had been going for close to 24 hours in a single day. So the last thing we did was attach the diagonal supports from the top of the frame down to the feet uh, and then we called it a night. Later that week after work, we put in another late, late night to finish the arm, finish the bucket, and then we had to attach the sling and all the hardware that went with that. We made the release pin, kind of making it up as we went, just looking around the workshop and the basement for things that would work, but we finally came up with something that would do everything we needed and we could adjust it to uh, change the release timing of the sling. There's a plane. Goodbye plane. Messing, we're on a time crunch here. The sun is setting and you're messing me up. Next, we had to attach the sling in a way that it would not just get ripped off the arm by the weight of the projectile. Uh, we were working really late again. This is somewhere around 2 a.m. Uh, so we were trying to find ways to work quietly and not disturb the neighbors. Also, Jacob's kid was sleeping in the room just above where we were working. So we are trying to cover the staples in uh, cloth as we hammered it in to try to dampen the noise a little bit. After the staples were in place, we used some rope to uh, wrap the rope for the sling in place really, really tightly. After we had that uh, wound as tightly as we could get it, we took a wood, uh, wooden mallet to tap the, the binding down to get it nice and tight and make it look nice. And uh, we used a wooden mallet so we wouldn't mar and scratch up the arm, uh, the wood on the arm. At this point, everything was done. All that was left was to put everything together. We put the arm up on the frame and then attached the bucket to the arm. All in all, it took a little over 36 hours of the two days that we worked on it. Uh, the day before the shoot, we just loaded it up onto a trailer and brought it out here to our property to get it ready for the shoot the next morning.
sad horn noises. Uh, mm, mm, mm.